Hello, my name is Josh and I'm from the Pete's Transportation Department. The purpose of this video is to give instruction on unloading a pinwheeled trailer. Topics we will cover in this video include definitions. These definitions will help us understand the context of the process and allow me to use shorthand terms when explaining the process. Next, we will cover trailer loading configurations. Visualizing these configurations will illustrate how different pallet orientations help to optimize space on the trailer and make loads more secure. The overarching topic we cover in this video is unloading. This video provides unloading techniques for both pallet jacks and sit down forklifts. Lastly, I will cover some troubleshooting techniques and tips and tricks. This is a standard 48 by 40 grocer pallet. For definitions, I will call the 40 inch length the front of the pallet and the 48 inch length the side of the pallet. The orientation of the front and side of the pallet determines how much space the total pallet takes up on the trailer. It can mean the difference between 52 and 60 pallets. Another distinguishing feature of the front of the pallet are the two open channels. These two open channels allow for either a pallet jack or a forklift to enter the pallet. In contrast, the side of the pallet has two short slots. Only a forklift can pick up a pallet from the side. Again, we are all probably well acquainted with the features of a standard pallet, but with clear definitions, it becomes easier to talk about the configuration of those pallets once they are loaded onto a trailer. This diagram illustrates three common trailer load configurations, straight, turned, and pinwheel. The orientation of a pallet in a straight load has its front sides parallel to the nose and tail of the trailer. Moreover, it keeps the open channels facing out for easy entry into the pallet by either pallet jack or forklift. A straight loaded trailer can hold up to 52 pallets. Notice in this demonstration how the forklift drives straight into the pallet. Very little adjusting is required before the pallet stack is removed from the trailer. Always be sure that the pallet stack is clear on both sides and top before pulling out. The middle image in the diagram shows a turned load also known as a side load. The orientations of the pallets in this load has the side of the pallets parallel to the nose and tail of the trailer. In this orientation, only the short slots face outward towards the unloader, and only the forks of a sit-down can access the pallets. Up to 60 pallets can be loaded on a turned load trailer. The unloader has to be more careful while conducting the unload of a turn load because of the reduced space between the trailer walls and the adjacent pallets. Also, be aware of the balance of the load on the forks. It's not as stable as a load being picked up from the straight orientation. Lastly, and most importantly for our tutorial, is the pinwheeled load. The pinwheel load has a distinct pattern throughout the load. The pattern consists of each row containing both a side loaded and a straight loaded pallet. This interlocking configuration not only allows for more space optimization and more stable transit, but also allows the use of a pallet jack to unload pallets that have been side loaded. A pinwheel load allows for up to 56 pallets. Notice, as I unload the pallets from a pinwheel load, I start with the straight loaded pallet. After the straight loaded pallet is removed from the row, I can angle in the pallet jack to retrieve the side loaded pallet. Retrieving the side load pallet can be tricky because you must change the orientation of the pallet inside the trailer. The 
most common issue when removing a pallet from a pinwheeled load is that the pallets are stacked too close to each other and the pallet jack cannot make the angle. Adjustments to the position of the pallet must be made. Here's that issue from a couple of angles. In this demonstration, I am doing just that. I am creating space between the pallet in order to make space for my pallet jack to enter the open channels and at the same time keep the freight of one pallet stack clear from the adjacent pallet stack. Notice in the close-up how I only enter one prong of the pallet jack. This gives me more leverage and an easier angle to enter the pallet. However, with only one prong in the pallet, I can only lift it slightly. This slight lift gives me the advantage I need to adjust the position of the freight, enough to pivot and enter the pallet with both prongs. With the freight now clear of the adjacent pallet, I complete the orientation change and remove the freight from the trailer. Here's an angle on crowded freight that is side loaded. The same principle of making space between the freight applies here. When I enter with the forks, I use a slight lift, keeping sure that I always have the pallets pushing against each other. Then I can lateral shift with the fork lift, a little to the right, and then back again to the left, creating space between the pallets. You can also pull back to get a better angle on the pallet and pivot with the tips of the forks. Finally. When I am sure that there is sufficient space between the pallet stacks, I can carefully remove the freight. Let's run through an overview of what we've covered on our tutorial. First, we went through definitions. These definitions gave context to the procedure. Secondly, we explained different pallet configurations and the benefits that flow from side loads and pinwheel loads. Third, while explaining the different configurations, we demonstrated how each load is approached for unloading. And lastly, we covered some troubleshooting tips and tricks for when we run into those more troublesome pallets. Again, my name is Josh and I'm in the Pete's Transportation Department. I hope you enjoyed this short video and please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Have a wonderful day and cheers.